FSN Radio. It's all about what's next. Go to FinancialSurvivalNetwork.com and sign up for your free weekly newsletter. You'll also get three free reports. The Financial Survival Network. It's all about what's next. Financial Survival Network is brought to you today by Orin Resources, a junior exploration company with the appetite of a major. It's hot on the trail of the next globally significant discovery, creating enormous potential upside for you, the shareholder. Orin is one of the most aggressive exploration companies pursuing high-grade, scalable gold and copper deposits and has a premier seven-project portfolio, including its two flagships, Committee Bay in the Arctic and Sombrero in Peru. Orin's unparalleled technical team and highly experienced management has a history of success in advancing and monetizing exploration assets. No wonder oren has been called one of the best in the junior exploration sector. Oren trades on the TSX and the NYSE under AUG. To learn more, go to orinresources.com. That's A-U-R-Y-N resources.com. The Financial Survival Network. It's all about what's next. Welcome. You are listening to the Financial Survival Network. I'm Kerry Lutz. And hey, one of our sponsor companies uh, is back. They've got some news. And uh, we've got Ivan Bebek here with us, Executive Chairman of Orin Resources. Hey, if you want to find Orin, you can check out their website, AURYNresources.com. And you find them trading on the TSX. AUG and the New York Stock Exchange American AUG. And Ivan, welcome back. Thank you so much. Great to be back. So interesting things going on with the company. Uh, certainly it's no surprise to me because you know I've looked at the company in depth and seen the, the caliber of your projects, the caliber of the team behind it. But Sombrero, which is located in Peru, uh, you've been doing some some sampling there. Yes, absolutely. Um, we've been busy uh, kind of on the final stretch before we turn a drill for the first time ourselves on this project. We uh, sampled an incredible surface sample trench of about 184 meters, a 0.57% copper equivalent. Um, why that's important, just as a reminder for your listeners, is because there's a mine next door called Las Bombas, which averages 0.6% copper molybdenum equivalent. Um, we're, we're dealing with copper gold, but the mine next door is worth about, you know, it sold for $8 billion in 2014, but the gross metal value is about $60 billion worth of copper. And so when you look at that kind of an analog, and which is what our whole story about Sombrero is, and we start hitting these kind of big trenches, it's a tremendous, tremendous achievement pre-drilling to see these kind of widths and to see these kind of grades. And lastly, I'll point out, um, we just announced an extension to that. Actually, it's, it's now 232 meters of 0.5.5% copper, which is the same grade that's being mined next door in a lot of these massive mines on the big copper belt. And with that being said, you know, what we're looking at is, um, you know, something that's just blowing us away in terms of expectations. You know, I think when we first got here on this target, before we sampled it, the guys who can do a pretty good job of predicting copper estimated about an 80 meter width and uh, coming out with 232 meters just tells us that we're underestimating parts of the system, which are proving to be bigger and better than we thought. Yeah. And, and you did a lot of uh, samples from waste dumps and uh, ore stockpiles left by, uh, by the former occupant there. And yeah, th those have been pretty, pretty impressive. Yeah. So on, on that note, and I'm glad you brought it up, there's a, um, a lot of, um, there was some iron, iron ore was being mined here previously. There was an iron scarn and that's where everybody was, um, that's where everybody was um, working was on this iron scarn and they removed obviously the top 30 meters or so from the surface and they got, um, you know, multi-percent copper, multi-gram gold, which gives us the first inclination that what we think the third dimension could exist, what you'll get from drilling might be there subsurface and um, you know the grades are spectacular the fact that there's a little bit of a cheat sheet there with a small little small scale iron oxide mine being mined it gives us a lot of confidence that the grades are coming from beneath the surface not just on the top and and that's what we're hoping for yeah pretty impressive so you went from uh, 184 meters to 232 and that shows something doesn't it yeah, it's, you know, in, in the rule of copper deposits, 
and you can talk to some of the copper experts, some of the top mining companies in the world who mine copper. You know, once you get north of 150 meters of a grade that's being mined in the same region, you generally, you know, you get that really big threshold to whether it's going to become a mine or not. And I mean, there's so much to this project, you know, in that trench of 232 meters of, you know, um, 0.5 and a half, there's 40 meters of 1.26% copper, which would be extremely high grade on a global level. Um, this occurs in, in a type of rock that's called scarn mineralization. And in these scarn systems, the scar is the high grade, usually by a lower grade halo, right? And what we've done through our magnetics, it's a, it's a type of survey you can use a magnetic signal to reflect what might be beneath the surface. We've mapped seven and a half kilometers of the scar target of the potential high grade target, you know, and if I give you a little bit of a gold analogy, you know, if I said, you know, there's two grams gold oxide gold on surface, you know, in a place like Nevada, for example, and right. there's two grams gold potentially for seven and a half kilometers long, you know, everybody be, be jumping out of their seats. Wow. This yeah. could be another Nevada giant in the gold sense. So in the copper world, you know, seeing that kind of a real estate on, 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 that kind of signal is, is giving us the same kind of inclination, primarily because the system has copper in the trench in that same type of rock that would give that signal. And also because the big mines, the analogs next door are so comparative. And just for the sake of scale here, and this is something that everybody has to try to digest, it's huge. Um, these are over two out of five targets we've explored so far, which cover 10% of our entire land position that we carefully Put together after we screened the surface sample and took samples along this 7,000 square kilometers. So we have 120,000 hectares. Everything we're talking about right now, you know, falls within 10, 10% of that area. So it's, it's tremendous in terms of what could be there beyond. But what we're into so far, we're comparing it to a $60 billion potential swing of gross metal in the ground next door. So I know you're excited now, but drilling is going to start there soon. And that's got to really have you excited. Yeah, on the drilling side, um, you know, uh, everybody wants us to drill yesterday. I wish we were drilling in January, to be real honest. I don't sleep much anymore because the when you get this kind of surface results continuously, you just dream about what the first drill holes might look like on the project and what the last drill holes will keep looking like. So it's it's tough on the anxiety. But, you know, I, I was asked the other day, you know, what the take back was from, you know, our, our recent interview I did. And I hung up my my interview on timing and the timing of where we are now with the share price and where we are with the real estate of potential surface information that will come on between now and when we drill, this deposit or this potential deposit is going to get a lot bigger and our confidence is going to get a lot stronger, which will walk us into one of the most exciting drill programs that I'm aware of globally on the planet right now. Yeah, it's kind of like you're watching the lottery on TV and you're looking at your ticket and you got the first five out of six numbers and you're just <laughs> waiting for that last one to come up. That, that's very well said. And uh, for timing, um, uh, August is our target date to drilling. It could come earlier in July or it could take, you know, till September. The one thing you can't control in most countries, but Peru specifically, is the timing of your permit. What <laughs> I can say is that we're we're very, very organized and well within the process. So we're, we're in the final stages of, of looking forward to that permit. So hopefully we get that, that sixth number of the lottery ticket here in uh, August, September. Mm -hmm. That would be an exceptional starting of uh, revealing potentially another monster in Peru. Yeah, that would be amazing. And uh, hey, it's not your first rodeo. You, 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 know, you, you know the hoops you have to go through, the requirements and all the standards and what has to be done to get it. So you know, it just works its own way through whatever system you're working through. Absolutely. Um, we've, you know, as a group, we came together in 2005, but the average experience myself is about 20 years in the business. My partner's 30 years in the business. You know, there's a lot of experience behind us and our scientists, the ones who are doing all the exciting guessing part or revealing of what might be there. They're all former global experts from Newmont. And, um, you know, that's, that's an incredible pedigree of scientific background that we have working with us. So you know, it gives me reason and all of us reason as shareholders to really trust the speculation that's, that's coming into the share price and what we're talking about here right now. Hey, and speaking of that, you had a recent financing and you know, it's unusual for a junior miner to be turning money away, but effectively that's what happened, right? Yeah. You know, um, if you know us by reputation and I, I'm 
certainly lead this vigilant charge and my management team obviously agrees with it. Uh, I like to claim we're painfully anti-dilutive and we are very large shareholders of our company. So we, we try to treat it that way. And so we did a smaller funding. You know, we thought, look, there's a lot more news coming out of Sombrero. There's going to be a lot of speculation and some, you know, big layers of, of confidence will come into the project. So why do a bigger dilutive financing here? And secondly, we didn't want to do any warrants on the financing either. And so we instead did a small funding. We raised 5.2 million Canadian. It was predominantly friends, family, and then insiders were the surprise for me because I got their order after the financing was announced and we upsized the financing. And, um, you know, from that point, you, when you see insiders buying into a financing, it's one thing. Um, this was the single largest purchase of shares of Orin in one transaction by insiders, about a million dollars Canadian worth altogether. And, you know, at a dollar sixty Canadian with no warrant, which was about a 35, 40% move since January, um, you know, that's an aggressive move to make. And, you know, it's just reflecting confidence of what we think we're onto. And, um, you know, that's no warrant is anti-dilutive and we'll look for money at much higher prices. Um, we do have a few projects we've talked about selling for the last couple of years. Sure. And, uh, you know, in a, in a falling gold market, asset sales are extremely unlikely unless you're in a in a very desperate situation. In our case here, we're in the opposite. You know, we have a very robust share price that's just starting to perform. We have great commodity outlook ahead. And whether we sell assets to sell finance going forward or take money later, it would be after more news that we believe is in the pipeline that could considerably re-rate our share price. Yeah, and you have the option of uh, further developing uh, those other projects and making them even more valuable. But obviously your attention is is on sombrero right now and you know where it needs to be and yeah, it start it started on committee bay everyone right. knows us for committee bay we we spent 54 million dollars in the last four years or through four seasons at committee bay and we got closer and i think i've mentioned this before with you in an interview mm -hmm. and you know getting closer for four years doesn't pay shareholders you know hitting it is what pay shareholders we're finding it um you know we're going to go into the fifth season you know not too soon or not too long from now and we've brought in a new element of artificial intelligence and you know when you talk about spending over 50 million dollars in four years on a project like committee bay um, this is a 300 kilometer long gold belt and we've sampled the entire belt um, we've collected incredible amounts of data and with a lot of good high quality data it lends itself to the possible applications of machine learning or artificial intelligence. And we brought that in into the mix and, and the results so far pre-drilling the machine learning targets has been spectacular because it unbiasedly supported where we thought we were on the edge of discovery in two areas. And it brought seven more or eight more targets that are substantial to that same equation. So, you know, we think we're on to another one, but because we've been so fortunate with Sombrero for the start of the year, Committee Bay is kind of the the dark horse or or the one we're not talking about at the moment, but you'll hear about it soon. We have some news coming in a, in a video fly through in the next uh, week or so. We'll see how this AI machine learning platform came together, how much logic is behind it and what kind of details of data have gone into it. And, you know, it's new to us. It's new to every investor in the mining business to hear about artificial intelligence, finding gold deposits. Um, Committee Bay has a lot of cover. It's not deep, but it covers all the rocks with a, a layer of dirt per se. So you can't see a bunch of rocks sticking out of the ground with gold in them, right? And that's the whole reason why Committee Bay was available even for us to acquire. But it's not easy to explore proverbially blind, you know, with, yeah. without getting access to the rocks. However, when you look at the science, the amount of data they've collected, and you can put that into a machine, which can compute it for you, um, what, I, what I've kind of said and what I think people should think about is, imagine our, our own brains as humans, we can think in a, in a 3D format quite quickly, everyone can, you know, whether you're, you know, 15 yeah. years old or 45 years old, everyone understands a 3D image. But when you look at the algorithms that can be created and the iterations that can go through machine learning, you're looking at like 100D versus 3D. And that's something we, we, we just couldn't do ourselves at, at any given time. So, you know, truly a spectacular opportunity. If the AI learning works as a complement to the work we've done there, 
you have probably around 50 or 60 targets for massive gold mines potentially to be found on this 300 kilometer long belt of real estate that has you know tons of gold shedding off of this belt in several areas so it it becomes another you know history making opportunity and i think you know as a final point the market is really really hungry uh, so are the major mining companies for discovery. Mm. There hasn't been anything of significance in the last decade. Very few things. And, you know, Sombrero's copper gold. Well, the last multi-billion dollar takeout was Arizona Mining, which got bought for $2 billion, I think, about a year ago or a year and change ago. And that's the last major takeout in our business. And outside of that, the only mine that I'm aware of of significance that's been found as a new discovery was Amaruk, which is next to us at Committee Bay. That's six million ounces of six grams per ton by Agnico Ego. And so, you know, the, those those kind of things being so rare in the business, why I'm saying all this, they're going to lend a very, very, very robust premium to any major discoveries that are made going forward. And I know what a lot of investors think. The market's quiet. The market's, you know, it's suffering. It's, it's really stagnant. People are taking their money out of mutual funds and, you know, it's out of flavor per se, but there's enough new energy that's coming into the space saying, hey, look, it's bottom, then we should go long the mining space. But the problem is in the junior world or the guys looking for these deposits like ourselves, it is not easy to find them. We've spent probably a hundred million in four years and we're now there, but it's been tough. And we're there with a big one or two big ones. And then that's what's exciting for us going forward. Yeah. And it could be a revolutionary, a game changer in the entire industry. If it works here, this will be the first major mine deposit developed, discovered through AI. And it could really just revolutionize the whole industry and probably a lot of other resource-based industries as well, because uh, what works for one is probably going to work for for many. I'm just happy to be a shareholder for the test when it happens, right? And, um, you know, again, it's such a big statement that you made and it's so accurate. If this works, it, it changes the mining, you know, business a lot in these in the future of mining discoveries. But being a shareholder in one of the first big swings that can happen, you know, the real estate and what could be found is, is you know, hair in the back of your neck. But just being having a ticket to that lottery is for me, that's that's where I want to be as, as, a, as a big speculator in the exploration business. Yeah. Well, it certainly looks like you're onto something here. I mean, your land package is massive and the potential for other discoveries in that package is just overwhelming uh, to think uh, this could be the literal tip of the iceberg. Absolutely. Um, exciting time. And, you know, we had a conversation just this morning about the optionality in our portfolio seven projects and now sombrero and committee bay is the main forefronts of it but we've come a long way and for investors hearing about us for the first time and not having to endure the four-year wait and all the all the trying we did before um you get to inherit four extremely aggressive years where we're spending 20 to 40 million dollars a year advancing these projects towards to the point where they're at now so the short timeline ahead towards drilling both Sombrero and, and shortly after Committee Bay is um, it's going to be the shortest wait you can have as a shareholder. And, you know, if you watch our previous performance, the speculation usually comes up on the eve of a drill turning. So I think our share price, you know, provided the news flow is continuous, which we expect um, before drilling should be uh, hopefully keeps performing the way it has been this year. Yeah, well, it's exciting times. And as they say, the waiting is the hardest part. But uh all good things are worth waiting for, for sure. So you need to check out the company, AurinResources.com, A-U-R-Y-N, Resources.com. And you find it traded on the TSX and the New York Stock Exchange American under the symbol A-U-G. And I guess we'll be uh, staying in close touch with you, Ivan, to see what's going to happen next. Thank you very much. It was a real pleasure having the interview with you today. FSN Radio. It's all about what's next. Go to FinancialSurvivalNetwork.com and sign up for your free weekly newsletter. You'll also get three free reports. The Financial Survival Network. It's all about what's next.